It's not an understatement to say that every single faction within Warhammer 40k is pretty terrifying. Hell, even the series protagonist, the Imperium of Man, is guilty of some pretty horrific stuff. But this pales in comparison to some of the true monsters of the grimdark future. Like cosmic horror space bugs that eat entire worlds. Ancient alien undead robots that not only despise the living, but eradicate all life with merciless efficiency. There's even a group of depraved, sadistic BDSM space pirates that literally feed on the pain and misery of their victims. Being invaded by any one of these factions would be a pretty miserable experience, but which one specifically would be the most terrifying to actually fight in battle? Well, in this video, we're gonna figure all that out and a whole lot more, but first I wanna tell you all about this game that I've been secretly playing throughout this entire intro, Eternal Evolution, the sponsor of this video. Eternal Evolution is a brand new free-to-play friendly mobile idle RPG that's available on Android, iOS, and PC emulator. It's both easy to pick up and play anytime, anywhere, and characterized by its unique high-quality designs and beautiful sci-fi inspired art style. The AFK elements in this game are top-notch, so you can focus on something else while playing or take command yourself for those more challenging battles. And a ton of new content just got added to the game, including a huge collab event featuring four brand new time-traveling triple S heroes from from Ghost in the Shell, SAC 2045, Motoko Kuzanagi, Bato, Puri Nasaki, and everyone's favorite, Tachikoma. Complete with a brand new story challenge where you can see these legendary characters joining forces with the heroes of eternal evolution. You can unlock these heroes for free as well as a ton of rare items by participating in the collab recruitment and time limited events. So don't miss your opportunity to take part in this awesome event as it's not going to last forever. It's a perfect time to start playing eternal evolution as players who start on the newest server and participate in the grand ceremony event will receive a guaranteed free triple S hero Ravana. As most of you know, I am a filthy solo casual player, so I'm all about the PvE, like battling through the soul mines or completing challenging rifts, but the game also has tons of PvP content as well. You can download the game for free today by clicking on the link in the description of this video, or by scanning my QR code on screen. And when you do, make sure to use my code EESAC2045 to get some awesome rewards. Big thanks to Eternal Evolution for sponsoring this video. In order to figure out which one of 40k's factions would be the most terrifying to actually face off in battle against, we're going to look at the five major ones the community tends to point to as being particularly frightening, rather than examining each and every faction. Then we're going to compare and contrast all of their horror elements and rank them according to their creep factor. And with that said, let's start this video off with a faction that is far more terrifying than most people tend to give them credit for. Although the orcs are often depicted as the comedy relief faction of Warhammer 40k, this does tend to minimize their true nature as an utterly savage and truly monstrous threat that has little regard for human life. And don't get me wrong, I love me some orc memes, I'm a big fan of their comedy hijinks, but 40k's meme culture does tend to overshadow just how truly horrifying an orc invasion actually is. To the guardsmen standing on the front line staring down a full-blown wah, they are a horde of butchers, a frenzied swarm of monstrous, nearly unkillable, axe-wielding maniacs that descend like a green tide, ripping, tearing, and eviscerating everything that gets in their way. Men, women, children, the elderly, cripples, it doesn't matter. If you can breathe, then you are a proper target to have an axe buried in you or be pumped full of DACA. They don't have a sense of honor, no moral compass, and even if you're completely unable to defend yourself and can't give them what they want, which is a proper fight, they will either only become frustrated by you and curb stomp you into a red smear, or think that your situation is funny and drop a few explosives on you or let their pet squigs eat you alive. Although orcs vary in size and strength, even the smallest of their numbers are each a remarkably intimidating specimen. And not only are they larger, stronger, and faster and more tenacious than an adult human, but their anatomy allows them to shrug off devastating injuries that would kill any of us as if they were nothing more than a minor annoyance. There have even been examples of bisected orcs literally crawling across the battlefield still trying to fight. The scariest thing about them, other than their strength and brutality, is just how many of them there actually are. They are by far the most numerous species in the entire galaxy, and in a fight will at bare minimum outnumber the human resistance 100 to 1. They may not have giant demons like the forces of chaos or titanic botanical abominations like the Tyranids, but there's something so primordially scary about seeing a whole bunch of shoddily put together battle wagons equipped with a giant rusty bloodstained death roller or a frankly irresponsible amount of buzzsaws barreling towards you. 
If you want a novel that shows just how terrifying the orcs really are, then you should read Hell's Reach. It's quintessential reading for Black Templar and orc fans. In that book, there is nothing funny about the orcs. Not a single one of them has a speaking line throughout the entirety of the novel, and they don't get up to any of their comedy hijinks. They are simply brutality incarnate. And all that being said, the orcs are certainly a terrifying enemy to fight against, but how scary are they compared to the other horrors of the galaxy? Now, at the end of the day, an orc is still a humanoid. It doesn't look exactly like us, but we can recognize human features in it, thus it doesn't trigger the primordial fear of the unknown. Orcs are just large, intimidating threats, similar to what one of us would experience if we encountered a predatory animal. They're also intelligent enough to communicate with, and although rare, it is technically possible to parlay with the orcs and make some kind of deal. Additionally, since most people in the galaxy have some precursory knowledge of the Greenskins, it's also likely that they have an idea of how to fight them. Now, whether or not those tactics will actually be beneficial in a real fight remains to be seen, because the orcs can be incredibly unpredictable. But the human army in this example believes it is prepared to fight off the invasion and thus is a little less afraid of it. Most of the time, the orcs just want to kill you, and they're not particularly interested in prolonging your suffering or really making sure your death is as painful as possible like some of the other factions that we're going to talk about later in this video. So under normal circumstances against them, your death would most likely be relatively quick. However, in older orc lore, the orcs would routinely take the population of conquered worlds as slaves. Now, this is something that has been mostly toned down in the last decade. It, most of the more recent stories involving the orcs show them acting as more of a faction of looters that are particularly attracted to worlds with lots of metal. Metal that they can scrap and use to make more orky constructs. They're not really interested in forcing humans to mine resources. Now, I'm not willing to say that the orcs taking slaves isn't canon anymore, as I personally believe that it still is. Just that in the most recent stories, when we see humans get captured by the orcs, it's more of a prisoner of war type situation. A particular captain or general being captured and interrogated by the orcs, either to gain valuable insight into their enemy's defenses, or in some instances, just to be kept as something like a pet. The orcs seem to think this is funny. A little bit of a side tangent here, I'm not normally a fan of darker elements in a work of fiction being toned down, but in this particular instance, I think it kind of fits. I like the idea of the orcs primarily targeting a world in order to loot all of its valuable gubbins a lot more than them just being slavers. Taking apart highly sophisticated, super advanced technological marvels of modern science and looking at it as just a collection of metal. Metal that can be made into something even better and then it turns out just to be a giant scrap heap. That's way more orky to me than them just enslaving a population to mine a bunch of minerals. It's quicker and more efficient to just take the metal that's already made. However, that's not to say that Warhammer has removed some of those more disturbing grimdark elements from its lore entirely, and I dare say they've ramped it up well past 11 in the next faction that we're going to talk about. The Dark Eldar have a reputation within the 40k community of being the absolute worst, the most terrifying opponents one could possibly come into contact with due to the perverse and sadistic nature of what they're going to do to you if they take you alive. You see, the Dark Eldar don't fight to conquer territory. They don't fight out of some ancient code of honor that demands a slight be rectified on the battlefield. And for the most part, they don't care about claiming a world's natural resources. There's only one real resource that the Dark Eldar crave, and that's the psychic energy generated by fear and suffering. By inflicting pain, the Drukhari can reverse the effects of aging, heal their wounds, and grow even stronger. These guys are like a faction of truly sadistic psychic vampires that delight in the misery and pain they inflict on others. There's actually a great scene in the novel Silent Hunters, where a member of the Dark Eldar ends up being captured by the Kirkardons and is left in isolation. The absolute worst things the Kakardons can think to do to him is strapping him in a chair in a completely blank room, with no stimuli of any kind. He described it as the worst torture imaginable. Now, later on, when he complained that he needed to eat, the Karkardons gave him living rats. Now, such a meal was enough to keep him alive, but not enough for him to be fully revitalized. And he didn't so much as eat it, as the Drukhari anatomy doesn't derive any nutrition from organic matter, and more so the pain he inflicted on his living meal, the fear of its impending death. That's what he fed on. 
The Dark Eldar are not limited in their attacks like other factions, and for all intents and purposes, they can strike at any time, anywhere, due to their mastery over the webway, which is a pocket dimension that exists between the physical and immaterial universes, that has these snaking, winding corridors that branch out across the entirety of the galaxy. Most species utilize the warp in order to travel faster than the speed of light, but this comes with it an enormous amount of risk. Uh, traveling through the webway, on the other hand, is vastly more efficient. It's way faster and with virtually no danger if you know what you're doing. When it comes to the likelihood of a Dark Eldar attack, the more well-defended your world is, the less likely that you're going to have to worry about them. They prefer to attack undefended backwater worlds that aren't going to put up much of a fight, as to these sadistic predators, something like an undefended agri world is like an all-you-can-eat fear buffet. When it comes to their invasion tactics, the Dark Eldar have no intention of fighting fair, often silently waiting in the void and eliminating key targets of strategic importance, such as comms arrays, defensive grids, and anything that can be used to call for help. After they've made sure that their feeding frenzy will go uninterrupted, they attack like a vicious swarm of piranhas. Thousands of Void Raven bombers blistering across the sky, unleashing searing beams of dark light that detonate military outposts, while thousands of their raiding boats descend upon the unsuspecting population to not only whip them up into a panic, but also to capture and subdue as many slaves as possible. Some of these raids will produce a bounty of thousands, millions, or at times, an entire world's population of slaves. Those that ended up dying in the fighting are the lucky ones, as the ones that are captured alive by the Dark Eldar will be subjected to an unimaginably dark fate. They will be taken back to the dark city of Komora, where they will be sold off to the highest bidder and subjected to unimaginable terrors. Perhaps they will be sold to a particularly eccentric homunculi that will stretch their still living body into the walls of its lair or make them into living furniture. Maybe they will end up in a sick, twisted art gallery where although their body has been fully dissected and pulled apart, their innards stretching across an entire amphitheater, they will be kept alive, forced to endure inconceivable levels of pain, all to the delight of the wealthy Drukhari patrons that visit this museum of horrors. Maybe they'll get lucky and will be thrown into the Camoran arenas, where they will be forced to fight against the most terrifying monsters imaginable, gathered from every corner of the galaxy by the Drukhari Beastmasters. Mayhaps their death will be mercifully quick, or maybe it will be drawn out, depending on the beast in question. All while hundreds of thousands of cheering Dark Eldar spectators will all get a group high off of watching the ensuing carnage. Being captured by them is a pretty horrific fate to say the least, so it's no wonder why the Dark Eldar are often pointed to as being the most terrifying faction in all of Warhammer. But how scary are they to the average citizen? As will become a theme throughout this video, having knowledge over a faction can end up being a double-edged sword. The general population having some insight into a faction like the Orcs will kind of tend to lessen the fear that they induce, as it gives them adequate time to prepare to fight them off. Knowledge of the Dark Eldar, however, has the exact opposite effect. Knowing what these guys are capable of and what they're going to do to the population will cause widespread panic the moment the first raider appears on the horizon. And when it comes to the Dark Eldar's appearance, when you're looking at them in a one-on-one -on -one fight, they don't actually look that different from us. As sure, they have spiky armor and some of them might like to hang some skulls off of it, and a lot of them definitely give off some pretty strong goth serial killer vibes. But they aren't spooky undead robots like the Necrons, 700-pound axe-wielding barbarians like the Orcs, or eldritch abominations like the Tyranids or many of the creatures of chaos. Hell, I would dare say that most of them are actually kind of... I don't know, hot? They're like an army of crazy goth vampire BDSM elves, and I'm not gonna lie to you, on paper, smash. Even though they can strike at any place in the galaxy at any time, a knowledge of the Dark Eldar's existence is pretty rare. All of the Eldari, whether they be Drukhari, Harlequin, Craftworlder, Corsair, Yanari, or Exodite, are together a dying species. When it comes to the Dark Eldar specifically, the entirety of their faction exists solely within Kimura, a one single city deep within the webway. Now, Kimura is kind of an impossible place. It's way bigger on the inside than on the outside. And the deeper you go into its depths, the more the laws of physics begin to break down. So there's no telling just how large this city actually is and how many Dark Eldar are currently alive today. 
but it's safe to say that their numbers are nowhere near that of a faction like the Orcs, considering that Trueborn Dark Eldar produced the old-fashioned way, are said to be exceedingly rare, the majority of new births being grown in vats and tend to be looked down upon by Dark Eldar society. I'll fully admit this is me just speculating, but it's probable that they have a smaller population than even a species like the Tau. The point of this video is trying to figure out which one of these factions would be the scariest to fight against, and when it comes to the Dark Eldar, even though everything they do is both incredibly disturbing and super scary, the reality is that since encounters with them are so rare, it's very unlikely that any world they chose to invade would know anything about them. They wouldn't be any more afraid of them than any other raider faction. That being said, they would definitely learn the error of their judgment the moment they crossed the border into Kimura. What about the Necrons? How scary is the idea of having to face a full-scale invasion from the galaxy's original masters? Now, when it comes to the horror of the Necrons, it mostly comes in the form of legions of soulless automatons that seek to purge all life from a world through cold, calculated extermination. They use ancient technology that is so far beyond what human beings are capable of producing that it seems like an esoteric form of techno-magic. Even their run-of-the-mill infantry wield gauze flare rifles that rip their targets apart at the molecular level. As they are a faction of basically undead robots, their armies never tire. They never need to stop for rest, for food, or even for repairs, as the living metal of the necrodermis that they're all made out of is able to stitch itself back together. Their slain fighters reanimating after taking catastrophic damage, rising once more to prey upon the living. Now, witnessing such a sight would crush any remaining morale in the human defenders that sought to hope for just a moment that their resistance was bearing fruit. The name of the game when it comes to Necron combat tactics is Merciless Efficiency, and all of the different Necron dynasties do this in their own unique way. The Novak dynasty potentially being the most terrifying, as their combat tactics tend to favor massive waves of melee-based infantry that are all caked in eons of gore. They're like a bunch of cold, calculating robot butchers that hack and rend their enemies apart in the most ruthlessly, but shockingly efficiently way possible. Even though the dynasty practiced similar tactics during the Times of Flesh 60 million years ago, and many of the other dynasties tend to look at them and wonder if the Novak actually emerged from the Great Sleep with whatever little sanity they had before still intact. The vast majority of Necron soldiers are truly mindless and shackled to the will of the Necron nobility, so there's no reasoning with them. There's no chance to find any kind of common ground. Even if your world's leaders were somehow able to get into contact with the ruling Pharaon, the belief in Necron supremacy is so ingrained across their culture that even the most generous of kings would view humanity as nothing more than vermin. Now, what sets these Necron rulers apart is how they handle the blight of the living. Do they euthanize us in the most humane, quick way possible, like the range specialist of the Mephrit dynasty? Or do they instead vent their hatred for life in the goriest way possible by unleashing hordes of flayed ones that peel the flesh from their enemies' bones and wear their flensed meat like a fashionable blazer? Death by Necrons is thankfully normally pretty quick in the vast majority of encounters, with the exception of some twisted individuals like Illuminar Ceres, who is fascinated by pain and does some pretty horrific stuff to his test subjects. However, the likelihood that one would find themselves under siege by Necrons is remarkably low. They do send invasion fleets to other worlds, but normally this is part of their expansion efforts, and these planets are relatively close to their capital tomb world. So as long as your planet isn't located on the outskirts of a Necron Dynasty's base of operations, you're probably fine. The more likely scenario is that the world you live on was, surprise, a secretly an ancient Necron tomb world all along, and it's begun to come online. And these Necrons are pissed and looking to kick all of these freeloading squatters off of their property. What about the space bugs? How scary is it to be on the receiving end of a Tyranid invasion? Well, I actually just made a deep dive on the Tyranids, and I spent a pretty good chunk of that video detailing exactly what it's like, so I won't dwell on the details here, and would encourage you to check that video out if you want to know more. But it's safe to say that the Tyranids are definitely top contenders for one of the most terrifying things you could possibly fight against in the 40k universe. At first and foremost, each and every one of their different bioforms is absolutely horrifying to behold. They attack as a seemingly infinite swarm, their attacks preceded by cataclysmic natural disasters, and due to the insidious nature of the gene stealer cults that worship them, when the attack does come, half of the population will turn against you. Friends and family members that you love and trust, plunging a knife in your back the second the hive mind demands it. 
Seeing a swarm of Tyranids come head on is kinda like watching one of those fluid dynamics tests in certain graphic engines. It's just a cataclysmic flowing wave of teeth, claws, and tentacles that moves like a sentient tidal wave towards you. When it comes to what we consider scary, fear is a subjective thing from person to person. But when it comes to the Tyranids, all you have to do is be near them. You don't even have to be looking at them to be gripped by an overwhelming feeling of dread. And this is because of the Shadow in the Warp, a psychic disturbance generated by all Tyranids that acts essentially like a massive null sphere. Uh, to those of us who are not psychically gifted, this aura induces feelings of dread, panic, and imminent demise, and its range can extend for multiple light years out past a hive fleet. Meaning, when they approach your world, before anyone even knows what's going on, every single person on the planet's surface will have a massive collective panic attack. And this panic attack doesn't go away, it can persist for weeks, months, years, or even decades as the hive fleet approaches your planet. To humans that are psychically gifted, this aura doesn't just generate fear, but can also be tremendously painful and can drive the Psyker into madness. The worst part about it is that the Shadow of the Warp also blocks out all astro communication, meaning that once the Tyranids get it in their mind that they're going to eat you, everyone you ever knew, and your entire world, there'll be nobody coming to save you. These guys check off just about every single test when it comes to establishing if something is scary or not. They're cosmic horrors that come in infinite different forms, each more terrifying to behold than the last. They outnumber the population of their target some 10,000 to 1, with many of their bioforms being absolutely massive in scale. Their weaponry kills you in some of the most horrific ways possible, such as being melted down by bioacid or being shot with a gun that fires rapidly pupating parasitic worms that will tunnel through their victim's body and consume their brain. All while still being alive, I should add. Some of their most horrifying units include that of the Parasite of Mortrex, a creepy flying bug monster that through its prehensile razor-sharp tail will infect its victim with ripper eggs that will quickly hatch inside of its body and tear it apart from the inside out. Then there's a terrifying entity known as the Melanthrope, whose sole purpose is to harvest interesting new genetic material that the Hive Fleet can utilize to create new bioforms. They prowl around the battlefield until they find a suitable target, who they then inject with a toxin that paralyzes them after which they store them inside the sacks alongside their body, where their genetic material will be slowly digested away over a period of weeks or even months. It's an agonizing, drawn out, and all around terrible way to die. Having knowledge about the Tyranids before they attack is kind of a mixed bag. On one hand, when it comes to the general population, knowledge of what death by Tyranids actually looks like and the fact that when they are truly dead, they'll be melted down into biomass, which will be harvested and used to create even more Tyranids, which will then go on to bring about death to their entire species, it's a pretty grim, dark thought to think about and we can see why panic would ensue. However, a skilled investigator who knows what to look for when the first signs of a gene stealer cult uprising begin to appear may be able to put the pieces together and get a call for aid out before the shadow in the warp engulfs the entire planet. In a scenario like this, having a whole bunch of space marines show up to protect you and push back the hive fleet, it definitely lessens the scary factor. Even more so than the other factions on this list, there's no chance of diplomacy with the Tyranids. They're a bunch of bugs controlled by, for all intents and purposes, a sentient collective consciousness god. No diplomacy, no opportunity to parlay, and entering into some form of actual agreement with the hive mind is about as likely to happen as a slice of pizza convincing you not to eat it. From its perspective, if humanity didn't want to be eaten, why would it be made out of biomass? It just doesn't make sense and there's no point in it trying to debate with these biomass-filled lunatics. When it comes to ranking how scary each of the factions in this video is, Chaos is kind of the wild card. And that's because all of the scary things about all of the other factions can be found in Chaos in one form or another. The ability to strike anytime in any location? Check. The grueling conditions of living with the Imperium often set the groundwork for Chaos cults to begin in the shadows, which can grow to epic proportions and eventually lead to full-scale demonic incursions. Psychic auras that quite literally induce feelings of fear and dread? Check. This is a tactic that is commonly utilized by the Death Guard, and specifically units that carry bells like the Noxious Blightbringers or demons like the Great Unclean Ones. What about being tortured by a whole bunch of sadistic hedonites? Well, that's kind of what Slanesh is all about. Now, being taken as a slave and subjected to a fate far worse than death. 
once again, check. Look no further than the Iron Warriors and the Demon Kalaba if you want to know more about that. What about having hordes of rampaging berserkers that only care about slaughtering the enemy like the orcs? Well, this is also a characteristic feature of Korn and his chaos-based marine servants, the World Eaters. Unknowable cosmic horrors? Check. The Hivemind and Zinch would probably get along pretty well if the Hivemind was able to exist within the warp. In fact, Chaos is so unknowable, so mutable, and filled to the brim with every type of horror imaginable that it's honestly more difficult to find something that's not terrifying about them. If Chaos manages to get a hold of you, you could be subjected to any one of infinite fates worse than death. You could be taken back to the plague planet of the Death Guard and subjected to every horrific disease known to man, and some also known only to the gods, kept alive indefinitely as you are experimented on by the Biologist Putrefiers. Mayhaps you'll be brought back to the planet of the Sorcerers and turned into a terrifying mutant by the Thousand Suns. Maybe you'll get captured by the Emperor's children, and it will basically be the exact same thing as going to Kimura, but with a way more demonic twist. Maybe you'll get skinned alive by the Night Lords, or mayhaps, as was the case in one particularly horrible example in one of the Horus Heresy books, the Word Bearers Legion will capture you and 10,000 other people from your planet, crucify you to the sides of their ships, and then plunge into the warp, leaving you naked and completely exposed to the madness-inducing demon-infested waters of the Sea of Souls. Okay, so now that we've established what makes all of these factions so frightening, which one of them is the scariest to actually fight against? And honestly, it depends on a lot of variables, as fear is subjective from person to person, and there are certain things like knowledge of the enemy, adequate access to weapons and armor, how well defended a planet is, etc., etc., that can push the scary level up or down pretty considerably when faced with a full-scale invasion. I know on a personal level, the idea of getting trapped in a room with an 800-pound coked-up silverback gorilla waving around a massive machete with nothing but a sandwich to defend myself would certainly be terrifying. But if instead of a sandwich, I've got a plasma pistol and two space marine dude bros standing next to me prepared to protect me at all costs, the situation has certainly become a lot less frightening. To keep this video as fair as possible, we're going to take the most baseline Warhammer world we can come up with, one that's located not out in the frontiers and completely isolated, but also not a massive fortress world or a heavily defended forge world. A planet that is not necessarily a hive world with a population in the tens of billions, but also not a sparsely populated backwater feudal world with little to no contact with the rest of the Imperium. One that has sufficient defense in order to fight off some spacefaring threats, maybe a small navy, adequate military, but also with no inherent protection from larger Imperial factions like the Space Marines. If this hypothetical world was to encounter a situation it couldn't handle on its own, it could expect reinforcements to arrive via warp travel in about eight days. Not the short 24-hour jump from system to neighboring system, but also not the multi-year journey that it would take to go across the galaxy. When it comes to the knowledge level of the general population of this planet, the only faction that they know about is the Orcs, as they're the most common threat across the Milky Way and are a faction that humanity has been plagued by since the days of the Dark Age of Technology. It's reasonable to assume that the average citizen on this planet would have at least heard of them. Factions like the Eldar are also just as ancient, but they're considerably rare due to their massively reduced populations since the fall of their empire, and factions like the Necrons and the Tyranids have only really emerged as a threat in the last thousand years. Humanity has a baseline understanding of the corrupting influence of chaos from the sermons that they hear preached within the church. But with all of these, the major details are always kept super vague. The true nature of chaos and what exactly lurks within the warp is knowledge that the Inquisition doesn't exactly want getting out. So when it comes to things like demons, most of humanity thinks of them as more of a cautionary allegory rather than a real tangible threat. And considering that most chaos cults tend to remain underground, it's highly unlikely that any random human has any actual experience with a follower of chaos. Okay, so with the target of the invasion established, we can now effectively rank how terrifying each one of these factions would be for the people living on this world. As I mentioned at the start of this video, the orcs' tendency to get into a bunch of comedy hijinks in the novels does often overshadow their true barbaric nature. And don't get me wrong, I love me some comedy orcs, but it does kind of run counterintuitive to just how horrifying they're supposed to be. Even still, at the end of the day, they just aren't as scary as the other factions that we talked about, so I'm going to put them in at number 5. 
And while I'm at it, I'm gonna do something that some people watching this video might disagree with. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Necrons in at number four. All of these factions are horrifying in their own right, but with the Necrons, they come in and eradicate all life as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's about as scary as fighting off any other massive threat, but at least with the Necrons, you know your death is going to be incredibly quick. In third place, I'm gonna put the Dark Eldar, and I know this might be a little bit more controversial, as a lot of people watching this video were probably expecting them to see the top of the list, but let me explain. The core concept of this video is which one of these factions would be the scariest to actually fight against, and to truly be terrified of fighting the Dark Eldar, you kinda need to know a lot about them. You need to know what's going to happen to you if they manage to capture you alive. If they invade your world and you don't know anything about them, they appear as just a bunch of space pirates, and with the exception of the homunculi coven units, which are indeed quite horrifying. But there's nothing particularly scary about Calibite warriors or witches. And as I mentioned before, sexy goth space elves are definitely kind of at the top of the smash list, at least for me personally. I'm just saying there are worse ways to go. The ironic part about the Drukhari is that the less well defended your planet is, the more likely you are to be attacked by them. But the less defenses you have, the more likely you are to be living on some backwater world completely removed from the galactic stage. So these people have no idea what's coming for them, and thus don't have any reason to be any more afraid of them than any other invading faction. Even if for the sake of the argument, this is a world that has been preyed upon by the Dark Eldar in the past, the amount of mortal men and women that have managed to escape Kimura and tell about their terrifying experiences is relatively small. And we're talking about a few dozen people at least, compared to the billions of slaves they have captured. The survivors on this world would have no way of knowing what happened to those that were taken, just that the Dark Eldar keep coming back. They'll learn the error of their judgment when they're inevitably captured, but during the fight itself, not much scarier than any other faction. So with that, it comes down to the last two slots, and it's honestly pretty difficult to pick one over the other, but I'm gonna put Chaos in at number two and Tyranids at number one. All of the factions that we talked about today have specific things that make them truly frightening to face in battle, but Chaos and the Tyranids practice all of these things in spades, and then in addition can reach into the infinite well of terror to pull out ever more horrifying ideas, concepts, and practices to subject their victims to. The only major difference between the Tyranids and Chaos in the scary department is that with the Tyranids, all of these terrifying features are combined into one faction. Whereas with Chaos, they are spread out across the four gods and all of the minor tag-along factions. The Death Guard, the Emperor's Children, and the Dark Mechanicum, for example, are all a very particular flavor of horror, but they are normally not fighting together. Hell, Chaos fights among itself more than it fights against the Imperium or any other faction. A lack of order and unity is kind of the whole point of Chaos. Now, Chaos Undivided is definitely a thing, but it's considerably rarer than fighting against a faction dedicated to one of the four ruinous powers. And most of the time in the books, when it comes to Chaos Undivided, you don't really see a Chaos Sorcerer summoning all four greater demons and unleashing every single aspect of Chaos simultaneously. It unfortunately kind of just becomes more of a melting pot of generic demonic evilness which is certainly powerful, but it's not quite as scary of an idea as being inflicted with all of the contagions and diseases of Nurgle, while also simultaneously having to fight off a roided up corn berserker. The Tyranids, at least in my opinion, are all of the infinite chaotic, unknown, and unpredictable horrors of chaos, but united by the will of a singular alien god. The major detracting factor for me that steals the number one slot away from Chaos is that with Chaos, at the end of the day, there's always room for negotiating and bargaining. That's kind of a demon's whole thing. Now, it's true that whatever deal you end up taking with them will probably end up having some pretty horrifying consequences down the road, but you at least have the option to take that deal or reject it. And when it comes to their mortal followers, no matter how depraved, grotesque, bloodthirsty, or treacherous they are, their wants, needs, and ambitions are rooted in the all too familiar wants and needs of man. We can understand the motivation of a chaos sorcerer who wants to become all powerful. We can understand the desire of a follower of Nurgle who wants to live forever without pain. And Slanesh? I've spoken to enough Warhammer fans over the course of my life to know that y'all are not nearly as immune to Slaneshi corruption as you think you are. Hell, even the gods themselves are quite literally human emotion given sentience. Emotions, albeit taken to their extreme, but ones that we can still understand. 
The Tyranids, on the other hand, are pure, unknowable cosmic horror. We may be able to understand the individual Tyranid as simply an animal, a predator designed to collect biomass, but that's just our brains desperately trying to latch onto something familiar to us in order to fool ourselves into thinking that we understand them. They are all individual cells of a larger organism, a godlike intellect that we can't even begin to comprehend or process. We know nothing of its motivations, its wants, desires, or beliefs. The Tyranid hive mind is the one faction that is truly unknowable, incomprehensible, and completely alien to us mortals, and that's why I believe that they are the most scary faction to fight against. This is all assuming, however, that we're talking about the most baseline humans on the most normal world and that the population has an average amount of knowledge about the galaxy. If the population had extensive knowledge about all of these threats, then the Tyranids would probably drop down the list. The Drukhari would go to the number one spot, as the more you know about them, the more terrifying fighting against them becomes, as you're going to know exactly what's going to happen to you when they capture you. The first time those raiding ships descend from the sky, morale will instantly crumble. And knowledge within the population about chaos? Uh, honestly, there's really no winning here. The more knowledge the average citizen has about chaos, the more likely that they'll see reason there, that they'll join the other side. But conversely, the more order and restriction that you put upon the population, the more likely that resentment is going to grow and you could end up spawning a cult. Conversely, if a planet is super well defended, that's going to change the scary factor as well. If they've got a whole lot of guns and a lot of armies, then the Dark Eldar are going to get absolutely stomped, so the world really doesn't have much to worry about there. That's when something like the Orcs or the Necrons become a lot more terrifying. The more people exist on the planet and the more well-armed they are, the more Orcs are going to want a piece of the action. And Necrons? Well, they look at all of our weapons as about as advanced as our ancient ancestors who used to throw sticks and stones around, so they don't really care. At the end of the day, when it comes to us as the audience members trying to determine which one of these factions is the scariest, it all comes down to personal taste. Honestly, you could make a good faith argument for why any one of these factions would be the scariest. And I'd love to hear your take on this. How would you rank these factions? Which one do you think is actually the scariest and why? Do you agree with my list or disagree? Is there a faction that I didn't mention in this video that you feel deserves to be on this list? It's finally the start of spooky season, my absolute favorite time of year, so I'm thoroughly looking forward to hearing everything y'all have to say down in the comment section. Anyways, that's all I had to say on scary factions. Big thanks to everyone who supports the work that I do, and I will catch you all in the next one.